Hey everyone, how you doing? Dan here, and thank you very much for stopping by on this video. On this channel, you're going to find lots of videos about the DJI Mini 2 and also filmmaking in general, which I want to be doing a little bit more of too as well. In this video, we're going to have a look at three things you might not have known the DJI Mini 2 can do. It's pretty much a direct continuation from my last video, which was five things you might not have known the Mini 2 can do. All of these are fairly basic, but are really quite useful as well, which always makes it even better. As in my last video, some of you more advanced flyers may already know a couple of these tricks. You may even know them all, but if there's even one thing you learn from this video, I'm gonna take that as an absolute win. So let's aim for that. Make sure you stick around for tip number three, because in my opinion, that is the most fun. Not necessarily the most useful, but it's something really cool what the DJI Mini 2 can do. So let's jump straight into the video with the first thing you may not know the DJI Mini 2 can do. So this feature is all around the gimbal. You can actually change the angle of the gimbal tilt to go past zero degrees to get higher up tilts. So I'll just show you what that looks like. So at the moment we're on one degree, but there we go. We can go all the way up to 20 degrees. That's my yellow um, backdrop there. I, did, I once did a donut B-roll video with that. Um, definitely need to use that a little bit more and you can obviously go back down. Now, what's really cool about this is you can just capture more details around. It might be what your drone's at a certain level, but you just need to get a little bit higher just to capture what you need. And doing the upward tilt is also great for a vertical panorama, which is going to be one of my next videos. But this isn't turned on by default because it can cause damage to the gimbal, especially if you're in high winds. So let's just show you how to turn it on. So if you just open your menu at the top right, go to control, and you'll see here, allow upward gimbal rotation. Now that should be turned off when you first get the drone. Um, but if you just turn this on, like I said, it'll allow you to go past zero. Let me just show you without it. So without it, zero is the absolute limit. We can't go any further. But then again, if we just pop this back on, there we go, we can go all the way up to 20 degrees. Now you've got to be really careful with this, especially when it's really windy or if you're in sports mode. Because what will happen is if you've got the angle past zero, the drone will automatically default to zero when you start going at some speed or the wind might blow it down and it's quite a sudden movement but if you are trying to get some really nice cinematic smooth shots maybe turn this off just so you're not going to get that really jerky movement it's really really off-putting and it doesn't make for a great video at all but that's pretty much it for tip number one which was just to allow the gimbal past zero degrees so you can capture more when you're out and about but just be aware of the wind and sports mode just before we go any further if you do want to see more videos about drones and filmmaking please make sure to like comment and subscribe to my channel that would be absolutely amazing thank you we've just broke 800 subscribers so we're getting very close to the 1000 mark by the time this video gets uploaded Hopefully we're around 900, fingers crossed. But as mentioned in a couple of my previous videos, once I get to a thousand, I'm gonna be looking at doing some sort of DJI Mini 2 accessory giveaway. So definitely keep an eye out for that. We'll be getting there very shortly, which is absolutely amazing and thank you again. And finally, I've got a really cool drone playlist which covers photography, videography, editing, picture editing, flying your drone safely. It covers a whole range of things. Pretty much every time I make a new drone video, I pop it into this playlist. So I'll just pop that playlist up above and it's definitely something to check out, especially if you're new to flying or just want to learn a little bit more about more of the media and filmmaking side of flying the drone. So another thing you can do is you can zoom on the DJI Mini 2 controller. Now we all know you can zoom on the app with the times one and times two, that's great. But in my other video, the custom functions, um, I actually missed a fun I actually missed a function and um, what you can do with a function button and quite a few of you commented in the comments on YouTube and Facebook so thank you very much for that because I learned something new there and now hopefully I can put this information out there and a few more people will learn something new so we're all learning something new and that's kind of a main thing about this channel let's all learn as much as possible um, as much as we can that's exactly what we're going for so if you hold the function button down and rotate the gimbal either to the left or the right you can zoom in and zoom out which is absolutely amazing so it's what's really really cool about this is you get a creative zoom now we all know you can zoom on the mini 2 with this 1x and 2x but you don't have any creative control with this you get control of the speed so you can do it really slow like this or you can do it really quick not only can you creatively set the speed of your zoom, you can also set different zoom points. So for example, if you want 1.4, we can get to 1.4 and stop. There we go. If you want 1.6, you can do that too. Now just remember this is a digital zoom, so we are cropping in on the image. It's not an optical zoom like we've got on the Canon R6 here. 
Um, but still, it's really, really useful. Is what this allows you to do as well is an effect called the dolly zoom, which I'm going to be doing a full video on because I've got lots of good examples to be showing you. But the dolly zoom basically is moving the drone in one direction and zooming in the opposite. So for example, we could move the drone forwards and zoom out, or we could move the drone backwards and zoom in. And it's what the idea is here is we keep the framing the same, but because the field of view is changing with the zoom, we get a really cool warp effect. Now you'll have seen this on Jaws or Vertigo, and it's a tool filmmakers use to really make the audience uneasy. You might not want to make your audience uneasy, so you might not want to use this, but it's just something really strange about this shot. I'll play a couple of examples in this video, but I am going to be going out and getting a ton more for the actual video, but it's such a cool technique. Now for the final part of the video, you might not have known that you can actually take your drone off without using the app. Now this comes from older drones. I remember this when I flew the DJI Phantom. Um, we spent ages trying to launch the drone and we didn't actually have a takeoff button on the app at the time. So that's obviously the most easiest way of doing it. But once we had looked into the instructions, which I highly recommend everyone does, I mean, I know very few people actually look at instructions and manuals, but there's so much information in there. But we learned the method to take the drone off was to put the left stick to the bottom right and the right stick to the bottom left and this initiates a takeoff. So I'll just show you here. Right, so first of all, we're gonna remove the phone from the controller so you know I'm not cheating. There we go, not got the app open. And we'll just pop this cable away. There we go. And let's use this. There we go. And we'll build a little tower for the drone. And we've got the drone here, we'll just turn this on. There we go. Right, so we just need to wait for it to connect to each other. It won't take too long, just got to wait for these flashing lights to stop. Did I turn the drone on? No, nope. I'm getting really bad at this. There we go. There we go, da da da. All right, so we'll just wait for these to stop flashing and we're going to knock this one down there and this one down there. So basically we just knocked both of these to the middle and now that's connected. And so what's really cool about this is once you do this, the drone's not actually going to take off. The propellers are just going to start ready for you to take off. So I'll show you. So both sticks down to the middle. There we go. And all the propellers have started, but the drone hasn't taken off. So I've just stopped the drone just by holding the left joystick down. If you want to take the drone off, you obviously just knock it upwards. So it's just really good if you're out and about just practicing your drone movements rather than capturing footage. Because of course your drone's got to be in the visual line of sight anyway. Now we've got to remember what the drone connects to the remote. So that's always a constant connection. And then the remote connects to the phone and then that kind of completes the loop. But the phone never connects to the drone directly. So if your phone does die or the app drops out, don't worry. As long as the remote control is still connected, you're still good to go and you still, you know, you can still land and take off the drone safely. So don't be worrying about that. But I hope this tip was something new to you guys. It was something new to me. Um, like I said, I knew it from the old days with the DJI Phantom, but I've never really tried it on this just because the takeoff button on the app is so handy and so useful. But leave a comment down below if you did learn something new in this video. So we're getting to the end of the video now. If you did like this video or learn something new, please leave a like, comment, or even subscribe to the channel. That'd be absolutely amazing. And let's get closer to 1,000 subscribers so we can get this giveaway sorted out. But thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.